Hey everybody, I'm going to make this short and sweet, but I haven't made an actual video in so long that I felt like it was time. I better get something together for you. Um, as I said earlier, it's tax season and I have been busy with doing taxes. Um, anyway, today I wanted to talk about the narcissist and their assumptions of ulterior motives. And what I mean by that is when you deal with a narcissist, you're constantly being attacked by them because they view everything you do as you having an ulterior motive for doing it. They think that every thought, every action or inaction even, is, is something that you've planned against them, that you're deliberately doing against them. They have an inability to see someone as human and therefore they can't see you as just someone who may have imperfections. They assume that you're very motivated to hurt them, that you are deliberate in your actions, that you're calculating and manipulative in your actions and behaviors. And I said inactions, meaning if you, you know, you don't say great job on doing laundry or something, you don't acknowledge, oh, the yard looks wonderful, you know, enough, that's even an inaction. So they think that you've deliberately tried to hurt them because you didn't tell them that the grass looked good and, you know, that you don't appreciate them. I, I know with mine, Ark, he brings up the word appreciation a lot, even though he should be using it in a different um, light, like, does he appreciate all that he gets from me? Instead, he focuses on how unappreciated he feels. So um, I guess you should appreciate someone who sits on the couch and does little or nothing, but that's a whole nother, that was facetious. But anyway, you get the point, right? Okay, so they think that people are all good or they're all bad. There is no gray area, none. You are either, you're all good some days and then, you know, in a half hour later, when you looked at them the wrong way or they thought you were staring off into space when they were talking and they, therefore you were ignoring them, now suddenly you're all bad. And it can go that quickly. It is that quickly. And it is the smallest thing, the smallest slight that they view against them and, you, and you're hated. You're literally hated. You're despised instantly. <clears throat> they see people as bad if they don't meet their standard of perfect, perfection. Now their standard is very different when it comes to them. There's, but towards you, what they're upholding you to is a certain level of perfection. And there is no, there is no, uh, you know, barely hitting the mark. If you don't hit the mark completely, you are crap. You are bad. You hate them. You deliberately hurt them. You know, it, it just in the blink of an eye. So, um, it can be very, very difficult dealing with a narcissist. You're always going to be on edge and you're always going to be waiting for, you know, that feeling to come over the room that, you know, something's changed. The atmosphere has now changed and suddenly they're mad about something. Your, your, your job is to figure out how and to equalize it as quick as possible for them so that their life can, you know, remain in happy oblivion. <clears throat> I've heard... Um, I've heard it said that they lack object constancy and that I've heard it called splitting where they, they can't hold on to good feelings when the person is not there and they can't, you know, have a happy medium between, you know, I'm, I, you're not all bad and I still love you, but I'm really mad at you right now. There isn't, there isn't that it's, uh, all or nothing. I hate you. you know, I love you. I idolize you. And, and now I hate you. Um, but it's very, very difficult to live with, extremely. Um, as you all know, I recently busted my narc out as the cheater that he is. Um, it was one of the couple of areas that I would question myself on about, you know, maybe... Maybe I'll get some by some stroke of whatever, 
he won't be a narcissist. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's not a narcissist. Maybe he's something else and he can be fixed, you know, because a narcissist can't be fixed. So that was my hope. Um, and the idea or the thought that everyone kept saying that they'll have other supply in the wings and I couldn't find evidence of that. And so that was eating at me. And I mentioned in other videos that I put spyware on his phone and I tracked him and I was able to quickly find um, evidence to support the fact that he is cheating or was, is whatever. He, I'm sure he's cooling off right now, but I'm sure he'll get up to speed, you know, back to his old ways soon. But at any rate, um, I found that he was seeing multiple women um, occasionally and and one he was seeing since right after, well, since my daughter was born, since right after, you know, less than a year into our relationship. He was um, about the time I got pregnant, actually, I think is when he started seeing her. But um, no, I take that back. It was when I had her because it was in June and she was born in June. So it was in June. Um, it'll be four years in June. It'll be five years in June that we've been together, so if you want to call it that. <laughs> but anyway, um, since busting him out, he views it, that, as a violation of his privacy. And he says, I'm trying to make sure that he has nowhere to go. So in a normal situation, if you were busted cheating, you would, you would have remorse Either you would be like, yeah, I'm done, you know, I'm out of here, I don't know why I even stuck around, whatever, but but you wouldn't necessarily be able to look that person in the eye and be like, I can't believe you violated my privacy, and I can't believe you don't want me talking to anybody, so I can't have anywhere to go if you kick me out, well, and that's what he's saying. He feels entitled to his transgressions, as I'm sure most narcs do. That's their way of life. Don't take that. That's like taking, you know, their food. That's like taking money out of their bank. That is their, and that's their right. It's their right to, to choose to be that way. He's even gone so far as to, you know, like, I have to say, we've talked about it a lot. He doesn't want to talk about it at all, but I do. Um, and his attitude, he even said the other day, now, mind you, this from a person who, before this happened, was constantly saying things like, I was the cheater, I'm not really at work even when I say I am, I'm not clean, he's clean, he's a good dad, he's home all the time, I should be thankful, you know, when I say I don't want to be with you because I'm sick and tired of you calling me names, um, and sabotaging all my efforts and so forth. And it's like, this is what he says. I'm a good dad. I stay home. I don't cheat. I, you know, all this stuff. So now we go fast forward. Yes, you do. You were the one cheating all along. So you would think some behaviors would change. You would think that he would stop uh, accusing me because that makes him look even stupider than he did before, because now he's actually pointing out all over again that it wasn't me at all. It was him. I think that's create. I think that's his own self-created paranoia that he feels now that now I might be doing it more than ever because he did. So he'll say, you know, constantly, I don't think you're really at work. If you do, if you're gonna do you, I'm gonna do me, or some kind of a comment like that, and I'll just say back, you already were doing you, John. You know, like, are you forgetting? Um, but anyway, it, it doesn't resolve because they're caught, you know, that nothing resolves like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I apologize. I want to get this straight. Let's work through this. You know, instead, he doesn't want to work through it. He doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to acknowledge that much, how much he's hurt me like a normal, even a normal, you know, relationship where someone cheated. If they really wanted to continue the relationship, they would want to resolve the bad feelings. You know, they would want to make that person feel loved. And I am sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what they would say, but it certainly wouldn't be, you violated my privacy. It certainly wouldn't be that flippant, I'm entitled to do this. The other day he said, just because 
I'm a man. Just because every three or four months I went and did that was exactly what he said. And I was sitting there like, you are on my butt because of the smallest thing. Like there are men on my, that are friends on my Facebook that I don't talk to, but that are just friends on my Facebook. Like 1200 people on my Facebook. I don't talk to them. He doesn't understand the concept. I saw a, a picture on somebody's feed one day that I thought was cute and I screenshotted it and I sent it to him. So he automatically assumed that, you know, he said, I don't understand why you're ta talking or why you can see men's stuff or something like that. And I'm like, do you understand how Facebook works? It's just the feed coming through. I don't talk to this person. I don't even know him. I just thought you would think that the picture was cute. You know, and then he made that whole comment about just because I went and did that every three or four months. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I cannot believe how one sided you are, you know. But anyway, so, <clears throat> of course, a narcissist, if you're with a nar narcissist, you will never resolve any issue and you'll never move forward from it. It'll be the same old washing machine, Groundhog Day type feeling like over and over and over again. Um, you will, they will reflect their malign, their evil malign thoughts and behaviors onto you. So what they're doing, I guarantee you, they're accusing you of it. They're going to accuse you of doing what they're doing. So why he was accusing me of cheating all the time, that was my clue that he was in fact doing it. So keep that in mind, what they're throwing, the darts they're throwing at you, they're just deflecting them off of themselves so they don't have to feel that guilt. They want you to feel it instead. Somehow makes them feel like everything's right in the world. Makes no sense to me, but it doesn't make sense to a normal person. They also destroy your self-esteem to gain more control over you so they can manipulate you better. They want to destroy your self-esteem. They want you to feel like crap so that you will think that that's all you can get and that you deserve to be treated this way. So be mindful of those things. Um, but the main point of today's topic is although they are telling you and treating you as if all of your activities are have an ulterior motive behind them to harm them, when you step back and look, you realize that they are the ones who are operating with those ulterior motives. They are the ones that have ulterior motives behind all of their actions and all of their words and all of, all of their inactions. Totally. They want to destroy your self-esteem and confidence. They want to keep you guessing as to what is real and what isn't real. They want to completely use your resources until they have bankrupted you completely, emotionally, physically, and financially. They're their resources after all, right? They don't belong to you. They belong to them. That's what they think. They want to keep pulling you in only to push you away. They want to always make it like a, uh, you know, come closer, kick, come closer, kick, constantly. They want to, they expect to be given things they haven't earned and nor do they deserve because they feel so entitled. They feel entitled to everything. And they keep you purposefully at a distance trying to connect or mend fences with them. You are in a state of, of perpetual defense because they are in a state of perpetual offense. And I'm planning on doing another video on that topic alone because it's profound when you look at it that way. So what do you do? Um, my closing thoughts, because I can't give you a plan of action no more than I can give myself a plan of action, which we, we all need, correct? This is why we're here. We're here to figure out how, once and for all, to kick these bastards to the curb like they deserve. But at this point we're still stuck. And that's, that's the reason why I have this channel. I'm stuck. If you're stuck, you know what I'm talking about. One of these days we will rise above, but before or until that day, we have to protect ourselves. So what can we do? Number one, we can never give up the fight for freedom from their control. Never. 
Don't ever lay down and say, that's it. It's as good as it's going to get. Always, always be thinking and planning and figuring out how you can get away from this situation. One day, you will do it. Never take what they say at face value. They manipulate. They lie to you. Never believe and take what they say at face value. There are reasons they say things. You know, if they say, you're an ugly piece of shit, it's not because you're an ugly piece of shit. You know that as well as I do. It's because they want you to believe that you're an ugly piece of shit. So you'll stay under their thumb, under their thumb, and under their control. So they can manipulate you and they can abuse and use you. And never, ever subscribe to their view of reality. It is not rooted in truth. One thing that I find interesting is, is they don't even believe the lies that they tell about you. They know their lies. They know that. But it doesn't matter to them because that's they're not saying it to be truthful. They're saying it to manipulate you. They're saying it to keep you down. They're saying it to keep you guessing. They're saying it to bring on fear. They're saying it to um, control you, basically. So those are some thoughts for today. Uh, sorry it's not longer. Just wanted everybody to know I was still alive. And uh, he hasn't buried me in the backyard yet. So, and hopefully... Hopefully he won't, but some days I wonder. Anyway, take care, and uh, please subscribe. Please leave your comments in the uh, comment section below. I look forward to them. And also, if you have ideas about um, topics that you would like me to research and talk on, please do that as well. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Love you all.